Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we're gonna create a particle intro like this in this tutorial. And I think it's pretty cool, but we'll be taking a look at some of these elements like, uh, you know, the circle, uh, you know, reveal like this. And then we also have like a little shockwave element in here. So we will be using the plugin trap code particular. So it does not come with After Effects. You'll have to pick it up from redgiant.com. But let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in a new composition. I uh, already have a background with a gradient ramp on here. And I also added a masked uh, vignette. But these are not essential to the tutorial because we will be creating the uh, particle logo reveal. So, so let's go up to layer new solid. And we call this one particles. And make sure to make comp size. And we'll click OK. And then let's go up to effect. And then let's go grab the trap code particular effect. And you know, if you scrub through here, we see a few particles. That's cool and all. So in order to get these particles to react on a circular uh, layer, we need to go up to layer, new, solid. And we'll call this one circle. And let's make sure the width and height are a square. So 1080 by 1080 is gonna work for us. And click OK. And then let's double click the circle, the ellipse mask up here. And that will create a perfect circle like that. And then what we need to do under mask one here, we need to go up to edit, duplicate. So we have two masks here and set mask two to subtract. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the circle layer is selected and we're gonna hit MM on our keyboard to bring up all the mask properties. Um, and then we, we're gonna go to the mask two mask expansion and we're gonna kind of bring that into the negative value to kind of create like an outline of a circle. And then maybe we can hit S on our keyboard to bring down the scale. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go make sure the layer is selected to go up to layer pre-compose and we can just call this one circle and move all attributes into new compositions, fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and pre-compose this one more time and we're gonna call this one circle reveal. Then let's go ahead and open up this, uh, go into the circle reveal comp and then let's go to, make sure the circle is selected and go to effect transition and we're gonna add the radial wipe effect. And let's go to like 12 frames here and uh, add a keyframe for the transition completion and set that to 100%. And then go to like one second and 12 frames, something like that, and go to set it to 0%. So now we'll have this nice little reveal on like this. And if you want, you can increase the feather by a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much. But there you have that. And then we can go right back into our main comp here. So the first thing we'll do is set our circle reveal comp to a 3D layer and hide it. Then let's go back to our particles layer with particular on. And let's set the emitter type to layer. And then let's go down to layer emitter, which is down here, and set the layer to the circle reveal. And then we need to set the layer sampling to particle birth time. If we take a look here, we don't see much going on here because our particle per second is really small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this all the way to like 1 million, which should be basically the max amount of particles per second you can add. And then we're gonna go to one second and 12 frames to the end of our uh, circle reveal animation. And we're gonna add a keyframe for particles per second. And then we're gonna move forward by one frame and we're gonna set this down to zero. So it'll stop emitting the particles. And then let's go start, let's go ahead and start tweaking some of these settings. So the direction, let's go and set this to outwards. And then let's go to the directional spread at percentage and set that to 100. And then let's go to the velocity, maybe set this to 300. Uh, you know, maybe the velocity random, just tweak that like by a little bit and maybe the uh, velocity from motion, we can bring that up by a bit. So we take a look here and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a little bit slow for my computer here, but as you can see, the particles will reveal on as the circle transitions on and it's, see how it's thicker at the top and thinner at the, you know, the at this uh, tip of the transition. And that's looking pretty good. And now we can kind of go through here and really start tweaking some of these settings. So let's go right into the particle tab and close the emitter tab up. And let's start tweaking some of these settings. So maybe the life per second, maybe we can set this down to two. Um, and then let's go down to maybe the life random. Maybe we can bring that to like 20% or something. And as you see, the, the particles will kind of die out over time after like two seconds after they're alive. So that's good. And then we can go down to size, maybe bring that down to three because these particles are kind of big. And maybe we can go to the opacity random and maybe set that to like almost 20% as well. And then we can really get you know creative with this. Maybe we can open up the auxiliary system and turn that on to continuously. 
And you're, you're going to get some really messed up stuff here, but I think it's really awesome. So maybe what we can do is set the size of this down to 1.5 and maybe set the opacity up to 100%. And then maybe what we can do is go to the color over life and if I bring this out by a little bit, we can maybe select the uh, one of our presets here, maybe like a blue color with just three little tabs here. And it'll change the color of our auxiliary particles, but maybe we can go into here and we can always change the color of of these particles ourselves. And I'll do more of a orange to red transition. Okay, so now we have all these particles going everywhere. Let's go ahead and turn this off and actually put our logo in there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my logo, put this right in here, you know, scale it down. So then what we do is grab the ellipse tool, make sure the fill is set to white, you know, maybe bring up my title safes and kind of add this to the middle here. Hold down Command and Shift on a Mac to create a perfect circle or Control and Shift on a PC to create a perfect circle like this. And then maybe what we'll do is go to the Align tab and center this up and put it underneath our logo layer and maybe hit T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity and set this down to like 25%. And maybe we can take both of our uh, you know, maybe take our logo here, maybe scale it up by a little bit until we're satisfied. Make sure that's uh, lined in the center as well. And then we'll take both of our layers here and pre-compose them and call it logo. And then maybe now we can hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale and maybe we can break this down just by a little bit as well. So now we just have our logo in there. And let's say we want this to pop up in here around this time. So let's add a keyframe for the scale and bring that keyframe forward in time, maybe to two seconds, and then add the scale to 0%. And now this will just pop in there. Maybe make the last keyframe an easy as keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And if we turn the particles back on, and maybe we come take a look at this. So let's say the circle is too big. So what we can do is we can uh, go right into the circle reveal comp, uh, and maybe even go into the circle comp here and hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale. And we can kind of scale this down by a little bit. If we go back into our main comp here, you'll see that the circle reveal got a little bit smaller. So, you know, there's a quick way to, you know, very quick to adjust this. And that's pretty cool. You know, maybe if we go back here, maybe we add a keyframe for the scale and go to the beginning of our timeline. And maybe we can kind of come here and kind of have like the circle scale in like this. So it's gonna start our, uh, our path to start off large and it's really just gonna nail right into there at the perfect time. So now let's say we wanna create a shockwave. Let's go back into our circle comp, maybe just copy our circle, go back into our tut here, our main composition and paste that circle right back in here. Maybe we can, you know, delete the keyframes and say we want the shock wave to come on right after our logo pops up. So let's go to two seconds. Let's add a keyframe for the scale, set the scale down to zero, move forward in time to say maybe, I don't know, three seconds. And then let's really scale the circle up to go past the frame here. And then when that's done, let's just go ahead and pre-compose the circle and we can call this one, uh, you know, shockwave reveal. Well, I had trouble trying to figure out how to spell that. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and grab our particle layer here and let's duplicate it and maybe just bring it to the top so we can kind of keep it all separated. Make the shockwave reveal layer a 3D layer and go right back into the particles and we need to go into the emitter and set the layer emitter to our shockwave reveal. And there's a few uh, settings that we'll tweak in here just to kind of help optimize this. But if we take a look at what's going on here, maybe we'll turn off our other particles and to make sure to turn off the shockwave reveal. So the only problem is we can't see any particles from our shockwave. So let's go ahead and hit U on our keyboard to bring up the uh, keyframes here. And this is why we can't see any particles because we're emitting zero right now. So what we're gonna do, select both of the keyframes here and we're gonna right click it, go to keyframe assistance and click on time, reverse keyframes. Take a look here. Now we can kind of see all these particles coming through here. And then let's go ahead and go into the uh, particle tab here. And let's set the size down to like one because we have a lot of particles in here. Then let's go into the auxiliary system and set that size down to one as well. So maybe the circle is a little too big. So what we can do is go back into our shockwave reveal and we hit M on our keyboard to bring up the mask expansion here. And maybe we can even make this line a little bit skinnier. And that's gonna definitely determine how many particles this is going to emit. As you see, the line of particles just got really thin. And you know, so far, you know, that looks really awesome. So maybe we can enable our particles, turn these particles back on, or at least our main reveal particles. And now we kind of have all this back in here. 
And if you see, if we scroll through here, the particles will die out and everything is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn on motion blur for our particle layers. Make sure to turn it on at the top and then we are basically done. So go ahead and render it out. And after you're rendered, this is what you should have gotten. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please be sure to check out my social media networks. So those links are in the description of the video. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.